Hey everyone, in today's video, we're going to check out Arcade 64, a continuation of the main UI FX project. We can get this from multiple sources, but I will focus on two as there are many resources available to add on after setup. This is arcade.mainworld.info, where I will be downloading mine from. As you can see, I already went ahead and downloaded this to my desktop. This is for MAME version 0.261. Older MAME ROMs can work with this version, so do not be discouraged. If you prefer to match it to the set that you have, just scroll down and click on older versions of Arcade. It will take you to an archive hosted on progretosnaps.net slash arcade, which will be our second site. Go ahead and extract the folder, rename it and place it where you please. For demonstration, I will keep it on my desktop. Open the folder and then we will execute arcade64.exe so that the application can set up the rest of its files within this folder. Upon launch, you're going to see a list of games. These are not playable yet as they are just a directory of a main set. We will add our games in just a moment. A neat thing about this application is that it will show you which ROMs and BIOS are incorrect. Although it will not help you fix it, it's going to let you know exactly what is not working so that you can go out and seek the fix yourself. Okay, so I just went ahead and resized this and made the fonts a little bigger so that we can have a better clarity for this tutorial. First thing we'll do is we'll go to our options. Then we'll click on default game options. Here you have all the options for running main here through this UI. First option we see is our display and we have all the controls here for our display of the game. We have many different video modes. You can rotate here. You can mess with integer scaling. You can even toggle on and off the bilinear filtering. We'll continue on to advanced and here you can have uh, any kind of syncing that you want with your game. You can also add frame skipping if you're on a weaker hardware. You can also change the speed of the emulation here. Here you can also add effects. Click on select effects and it comes with some preset effects that you can use. For screens, this is the amount of screens that you have. You can just leave this as it is or change the aspect ratio if you like. Here we have our OpenGL settings. This OpenGL setting here and this one as well, unless you choose explicitly under display, video mode OpenGL, click apply. We'll go here and now these options open up for you. We have vector settings. We have sound settings and for controllers, we enable joystick input under controller mapping. You can see which game devices or the arcade you can choose to use as a controller. So if you have a paddle game, you can choose the keyboard or you can scroll over to joystick. This is all about preference here. For our controller, this does a good job of automatically mapping it. In the miscellaneous, you can activate cheats and mess with debuggers here, save game state on exit, or lockout, etc. In game main interface language under miscellaneous 2, I'm going to put English. All these other options you can leave alone if you don't know what you're doing. And this is for the snap and movie playbacks. This is something that we're going to touch on a little bit later. We'll click OK. Now, as you can see, we have a list of games here. And these are all games under the folder structure. However, if we click on available, you only get these three domain games that are available. Everything else is going to be stuck on unavailable. So what we're going to do is that we're going to direct our main ROMs over to Arcade 64. Now, I don't have a full main ROM set. If you do, great. However, just know that when you import these ROMs, it will do a scan on the ROMs, and this may take a great time depending on your hardware. 
we're going to go to directories under options. We have our directories for ROMs here. We're going to go to insert. Find where your ROMs are located. I have my ROM location set. We're going to hit OK. As you can see down here, it's doing a game search. And we'll just fast forward it until the end. Now that it's done scanning, what we'll do is we'll click in our folder structure under available. These are the games that I have in my main ROMs folder. As you noticed, we have two colors on the chips. What this does is that it lets you know if the game is good to go or if it may have some issues. For instance, I'm going to stretch this here. I'm going to right click on this and we're going to go to information. Here, it lets us know under status is working with problems. Sound emulation isn't 100% accurate. This is not a deal breaker. The game works, but it may have an issue. If you see red, red will show you that the game is missing some files. So you may need to either re-download your ROM from wherever you may have found it or find the files that's missing, which it will let you know. The next thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and launch a game. While your game is launched, you can hit the tab button and it brings up the main menu. Here we can go to input settings. This is the input assignment for this specific arcade machine. This will change the inputs for the general main emulator. And here you can pick your input devices. As you can see, I only have a keyboard selected at the moment. Here we have dip switches. Under dip switches, we can change a few things here. We can turn on the test switch, which will take us to the test menu. I'm going to hit tab here and with the arrow keys, we can move around under game adjustments. I'm going to hit select on my keyboard and we can change everything from the price of the credit to adding free play. I'll click space up on the arrows space again to exit. You can change your game difficulty here. You can change the game time here. And you can have sound on a track mode. I will turn this on. We'll go to the main menu. Space bar. Now to exit from this menu, we can go to exit to game over, which will hit space bar yet again. It's going to let us know that we need to turn off the dip switch. I'll hit tab on my keyboard again. And turn it off. We're going to return to the previous menu and we can even come into video options here. Screen zero. This is the one that the game is operating under. We could come down to this one here. And if we press enter, it's going to give us this aspect ratio of 200 to 127. We could go back up to 4.3 and enter. You can choose cocktail. It's going to give us the mirrored version as if we were sitting down on the cocktail machine. I'm going to stick with 4.3. You can rotate this if you like. You can do non-integer scaling. On the X, the Y, or both. And we can turn it off. And now it's integer scaling the game. Go back. We can maintain aspect ratio. Turn that off and just have a full stretch. Again, it is all choices. We'll return to previous menu. We actually will hit the tab button again and to exit the game. Just hit escape. Now, other than just being a launcher for your main games, you can customize this program as we can add images here for the games that we have. We'll go back to this website. And here on the left hand side, we see resources here for artwork, cabinets, CHD info, control panels, covers, flyers, bar keys. All of these things can be added. Snapshots. They can be added to Arcade 64. We'll go to snapshots here. And what this does is that you can download a full set. 
I will personally not be doing this. However, if you do happen to download a set from here, we'll go back into the program and I will show you how to bring it into the program so your images can show up here. We're gonna go to options, followed by directories. Show directories for, and we'll highlight what we are gonna import. Your snapshots. Once you download them, you'll find your path wherever you may place them here. If you like, you can also place them within the Arcade64 folder structure to make it easier for you to find. As you can see, artwork is already listed here. If you wanted to add snapshots here, just create a new folder. Call it snapshots and then find your directory here. And once you do this, hit OK, it will scan the images and your snapshots of the game will load up right here under in game. The same goes if you're doing it for other things, such as the game over screen, logo, title, high scores. All of this information is available here on Progretto Snaps. This has been Joe with Joe's Gaming Lounge. If you found this video helpful, don't forget, give it a like, share it with a friend. And if you're not already subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button for more videos like this. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.